Have you ever had a budget that you made that you just never really stuck to? It didn't really work. Or maybe this is your first time ever creating one and you're deciding to take control of your finances for the very first time. If that's you, then this is the video for you. If you're an expert and you've got everything figured out and you're way past budgeting and you don't really need to know, then you can go watch a different video on something else. But this is for people who haven't ever successfully done a budget before. And I'm going to show you how to make one and stick to it so that it changes your life. See, it's really hard to understate how important this is because over 70% of people do not have a budget right now that they are actively working on and paying attention to on a monthly basis. And the reality is you're never going to get anywhere with investing, wealth building, you know, just living the life that you want if you are not doing a budget because it is the bare minimum requirement in order to take control of your finances. And like we say all the time here, if you are not controlling your finances, than somebody else is. I've been budgeting using this method for over nine years and it really hasn't changed that much. The numbers change, but the system remains the same. This is not complicated. We can do this easy. The only thing that makes budgeting difficult is our mindset and our behavior change. So let's talk about mindset a little bit first. So let's talk a little bit about the elephant in the room. If budgeting is so important and it's so easy, then why don't more people do it and why do so many people fail at it? Well, it really doesn't come down to anything that has to do with the numbers or the spreadsheet. It all has to do with human behavior. It's important to run your finances like a business. And we'll talk about that a little bit further. But if you run your finances like a business and you start taking control of it and you understand where your cash flow is going, you're going to start making strides in the things that are important to you in your life because you're going to have a direction for your money instead of just kind of succumbing to whatever ads or you know BOGO deals end up getting tossed your way. So, you know, why should you budget? Well, there's really four major reasons why you need to be budgeting. You know, number one, like I said earlier, if you don't control your money, then somebody else will. The next one is that you are the hero of your story. So let's make it one worth telling. Nobody is coming to save you. It's, it's, it's just you now. So if you aren't doing the bare minimum to, you know, to make things better, then nothing's going to get better. It's just kind of as simple as that. And a budget is one of the easiest, fastest ways to make things better really quickly. Um, the next is less stress. I mean, I know a lot of people that are stressed out. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they know their money, you know, subconsciously, maybe even a little consciously. They could be doing a little bit of a better job with it. And a lot of people just don't want to do a budget just because they're scared of feeling bad about how things are going. And that's just a bad mindset. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But then the other reason to have a budget is just kind of defy society and build the life that you want. A lot of people, they are just kind of playing within the rules of what society will give you. And let's be honest, the average card that society is giving people, it's not that great. So that's where taking control with a budget is one of the ways that you can kind of stick a middle finger up to society and say, hey, I'm going to do things my way. People don't fail budgets because of math or, you know, Excel spreadsheets or these softwares are just too hard to use. It actually has nothing to do with that. It all comes down to human behavior. And a lot of that starts right here. We need to have better mindsets. So let's talk about four mindsets that are really important to having a successful budget. So I used to do work with billion dollar corporations at the C level. And basically every single one of them had to have a budget done. Why is that? They have billions of dollars available to them. Isn't there enough money to go around in case something wrong happens? Yeah, sure. But you have to know where you're going and then you have to have money reinforcing that plan. If you don't, the money just going to get spent everywhere and the business isn't going to move forward as far. So if the richest company in the world, Apple, needs a budget, guess what? So do you. The second mindset that's really important is that this is about the life I want. This isn't just about saving money and putting it away because I'm supposed to. No, it's really important that you go, before you ever put numbers down on paper or anything like that, you go, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I want to buy a home? Am I doing this because I want financial security for my family in case something bad happens? Am I doing this because I just want to have fun in life and I'm tired of just working all day and then not having a lot of money left over? Well, a lot of that probably just has to do with the fact that you don't really have a plan for your money. And that's all a budget is. It's a plan to help you get what you want. Mindset number three is one of the biggest money killers. I cannot stress this one enough, okay? You are going to create a budget and then you're going to screw it up. Okay, I'm saying that, I'm going to say that one more time. You're going to create a budget 
and then you're going to screw it up at some point. And it's probably not going to be very long. It might be the first month, maybe second month, something like that. You're going to screw it up. That's totally fine. The point is that we are looking for progress. We are not looking for perfection. Okay. So that's the key difference. A lot of people go, oh man, I, I made this budget. I put in the time. The first two months went great. You're going hardcore at it. And then the washing machine broke and, you know, well, we kind of had that birthday that we were going to, we had to buy a gift and blah, 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 excuses, things happen, life goes on and you find out it's just not working. And then people start to fall out of love with it. The fact that you've even created a budget at all, whether or not you followed it the first, second, or even third month, it doesn't matter. That's progress. And that's what we're looking for. So get this idea out of your mind that I'm going to create a budget and then we're going to stick to it hardcore. No, no, no. You're going to be learning because you're going to create a budget and it's going to sound ideal, but because you're not used to doing it and you're inexperienced, you're probably going to miss a budget item. There's probably going to be some surprise expenses that you didn't account for. Uh, there may be, you know, a, a, you know, that couch that you're still paying on that you totally forgot about that payment and you didn't include it in the budget. It is a work in progress. So the point is that we are moving in the right direction, not that we cross the finish line and are absolutely perfect right after the first month. So mindset number four, I think, is one of the biggest reasons why people actually never start budgeting in the first place. And that's because they have this sense that things aren't good, but they don't know the numbers. And it's kind of like that ignorance is bliss deal. And they're just like, as long as I don't know exactly how bad it is, then I don't have to feel you know bad myself about it. And what I just want to communicate right now is that you should not feel shame for where you are you should feel shame for doing nothing about it. So if, if something is wrong and, and, and that's just how life was and you were never educated and nobody ever taught you how to do a budget, I tell people all the time, if I give you a bunch of hammer and nails, screws and wood and said, build me a house, well, unless you've done it before or went to you know school in construction or architecture, you're not really gonna know how to do it. You're gonna build a really crappy house. It's the same thing with a budget. I don't expect people to look at their finances and then be like, oh, everything's awesome when they've never done a budget before. Things probably won't be that great, but you shouldn't feel shame in that. If anything, you should feel encouraged. You should feel positive. You should realize that, hey, I am taking the step as the hero of my story and I am you know, progressing in my hero arc, okay? This is me getting my next superpower and it starts with doing a budget. So that's what I want you to feel. Forget the shame. We are moving forward and we are improving our life. All right, now that we've done the most important part of prepping for a budget, which is setting our mindset properly and understanding why it's important to be budgeting, now we can move forward and actually get into the numbers. So let's jump into this Excel spreadsheet and I'll show you a little bit about how I do it. So this is an Excel spreadsheet that I made and there are a lot of great spreadsheets out there that you can use for budgeting. Um, I will work to make this one available for people. Uh, but basically what I just have here and the way that I like to break it up is I have my housing costs, my living expenses. So these are things that are what I would consider essential. These are uh, needs uh, with the exception of maybe entertainment. Um, you could argue that could go into luxuries. But for the most part, these are needs. I mean, you, you got to have a little entertainment, got to have a little bit of fun. OK, luxuries. These are going to be things like subscription costs. Um, you know, if I'm when I said travel, I'm kind of like what's a monthly travel? Like if you take Ubers regularly or something like that, uh, that's what I mean there. Not like if you're going on a trip, this is the normal monthly things that you can pretty much count are going to be the same games, uh, productivity app, yada, yada. Um, and these are all, uh, you know, just examples. I try to make sure this isn't my actual budget, but I try to make sure that what I put in here pretty much covered every single category that you can think of. There may be one or two that are unique to you. Um, but for the most part, this is it. So travel yearly, this is something that is really important in gifts yearly. Uh, these are things that I specifically put in here. A lot of budget templates don't have because these are budget busters. That's what they call them. It's like all of a sudden you're doing great on your budget. Everything's going well. But then what ends up happening is, oh, you had that birthday for your twin nieces. And, uh, you know, that's that's not cheap. And, oh, you know, you really want to visit your parents because, oh, you love them. Uh, but you didn't realize that plane tickets were so expensive right now. Um, and then when you got there, you know, you wanted to go out and hang out with some friends and do some things. And it's going to cost you a little bit of money. And oh, sister's going to, you see what I'm saying? Like things pop up. So what I do in here is I'm putting the the yearly cost in and then it comes in here and it breaks it down 
into a monthly split. So like, you know, you'll see right here on my gifts, uh, my gifts category is right here in blue. Well, if I was to just set aside $158 a month and I knew that was roughly $1,900 I was gonna have this year, all I have to do is set aside $158 a month and then that money's saved and it doesn't bust my budget. So even though these three categories are yearly, I have them being broken up down here into a monthly split. And that's where a lot of budgets go wrong is they only focus on the monthly aspect of things. They only go, okay, well, here's your expenses. Well, that's not all of life. I mean, think about it like this. Almost everybody has an Amazon uh, Prime account, but they charge you that on an annual basis. And it's like 20 bucks a month or something if you break it down. So again, you've got to do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's better having something than nothing. Uh, the other thing is a lot of insurances actually get, you know, like car insurance. A lot of those get billed every six months or every 12 months. So these are other things that you really have to take account for that sometimes we don't really think about. And then obviously down here, the monthly, you know, make sure you put all your credit cards, student loans, uh, you know, car payments, whatever the case in here. Now this, sometimes people get confused why I do this. And I have this, uh, you know, savings and investments and it pops up down here as a monthly expense. And it, you know, it's like, well, that's not really an expense. This is money going to a savings account. I do this because of a mindset that I want people to have. We, uh, you'll hear people talk about pay me first. You know, that needs to be a really important category every month. And I solely believe in that. So what I think is a helpful mindset shift is that if people saw their savings account, their investment account, their 401ks, different things like that, that this is not investing. This is a bill that you have to pay every single month. And the person you owe it to is you. It, it, like there is no more important person on the planet other than you that you could pay, um, you know, it, because you are uh, you are setting up your financial foundation. So I don't care about the credit cards, the car payments, uh, the HBOs, the Spotify's, any of this other stuff. The most important bill you could pay every single month is to you. So that's why I have this coming down into an expense. It's literally just about um, making sure that we are doing the right thing. So, so that kind of explains it a little bit. The totals come down here, calculates everything. And then down here, you can see my income and, uh, you know, my outgoing expenses basically. And that's represented here on this graph. So as you can see, this is not a great scenario, uh, that we're in. If you look at my overall cost of living on this, uh, we're at $8,950. That's, less than a hundred and third 150 whatever dollars of wiggle room every month well these are just monthly and annual expenses other things are going to come up i mean so th this is a really dangerous place to be so if that's the scenario what i do is i come in here and i have my test sheet so i don't mess up my actual numbers that i'm following i create a test sheet and the test sheet is literally the exact same thing uh there's no difference but what i do is i come in here and i apply and I go, okay, let's see, what are some things that I'm doing in my living expenses that I could try to uh, loosen up a little bit? Okay, well, fuel, I'm driving to work, I'm not doing anything extravagant, uh, you know, that's kind of what it is. Haircut, can't look like trash, uh, can't really do anything there. Life insurance, that's important. So blah, 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 you know, okay, you know what, entertainment, I really got to do some wiggle room. So let's cut back. I think it's important to still go out, have some fun, enjoy your life, but let's just cut back 50 bucks there. Okay, just 50 bucks. We won't eat out as at as nice of places. Uh, we'll we'll go down, we'll cut that a little bit. So, okay, a lot of things here. There's not a lot, you know, going on so that we can really move around too much. So let's come over here now. Luxuries. Okay, well, yeah, as you can see, I took out HBO Max. Um, Netflix, you know, I really watch a lot of Netflix shows. So maybe I'll keep that one. But what I'll do is I'll take the equivalent of the Netflix out of my shopping. And I'll just bring that to 200. Um, you know, my Apple subscription, uh, that's the TV and all the other things. I don't need it. I don't watch any of their shows. I like the Netflix stuff better. Um, the Uber, things like that, I kind of need that. It helps me get where I need to go, yada, yada. Uh, productivity app, that saves me a lot of time. So I want that. You know, I don't need the games. I could probably read some more books. So let's go ahead and take the games out. Really trying to get ahead here. Um, okay, now we're looking at this stuff. I need a lot of this. Okay, I'm going to walk a little more. Uh, cut down my Ubers. Some of that's being lazy. You know, it is what it is. You know what? This is kind of tough 
because I love giving gifts. But this year, I'm just going to let the family know, hey, it's been a tough year. I need to back off a little bit. And I'm just going to cut that budget down by half um, because I, you know, I think my loved ones would not want me to go into debt uh, in order to just buy them gifts. So th that's, that's what I'm going to do. There. So I'm going to cut that back a little bit. And, you know, we can go on and on and on and continue to find all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. So the point is now I've kind of gone through, I've done that. And now if we look at my outgoing, I'm at 8,950. So income's still the same, but I've dropped it a couple hundred dollars. Now I have about, you know, almost $500 of wiggle room every month. That's still not really where you want to be with expenses this high. Um, I have a savings rate of 5%, but it's way better than what I had over here when I was like less than $200 basically. So that's why I recommend having a test sheet because you can come in here and you can toy with it and maybe you do something for a couple of months and then you add it back again or whatever the case. But this having a test sheet allows you to kind of go through, toy with things, see how you can tweak your life without making yourself absolutely miserable. And then this, you know, the rest of it, like I said, you just continue to go through. Now you can get hardcore on stuff and we can come in here and say, you know what? I am. I don't need this car. This is a really nice car and a really high car payment. I am going to sell this car, and so I don't have the payment anymore. And I'm going to downgrade to a much cheaper car, two hundred bucks. Boom! We just freed up freed up another three hundred. I mean, that's fantastic, right there. So there's a lot of different things you can do based off the lifestyle choices you have to make, and you have to go and say, okay, I've defined the lifestyle that I want. I've said what's important to me. So now. Now that I'm saying I want this more than I want my existing lifestyle, what am I willing to sacrifice to get the life that I want that much faster? So that is really what a budget does. It, it allows me to go in there, to take control, to test, to try different things. And again, you're going to screw it up. It's okay. You might go three, four months and it was done perfectly. And then the fifth month, you have a thousand dollar expenditure. You, you run over you know, a construction zone, all four tires pop, and you've got a thousand dollars that you got to pay for. Okay. It, 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 you can't plan for that. That's why having extra cash set aside, create an emergency fund. That's why these things are so important. So it doesn't completely derail you whenever things like that happen. So one of the things that I teach to people that's really kind of unique is that you need a reward system. And this is what I mean by that. I like to set up two things. One is milestones. And then the second one is what I call trophies. So I love, you know, playing games and video games and different things like that. And one of the things that they do well is they have reward systems. So, you know, whenever you're playing a video game for the very first time, it, you'll start off at like level one of whatever it is you're doing. And it doesn't take you very long to get to level two. And maybe when you get to level two, you get like a little treasure or you get a new power up or whatever the case is. And you're like, okay, that was fun. And then it's a little bit harder to get from level two to level three, but it's not too far away. And then you get that. And that kind of gets you psychologically moving towards it. Games purposefully put this in there to hook you. Well, we want to take that exact same behavior, that feedback loop, and we want to use that on ourselves. So the way that we do that is we say, okay, I'm going to create a budget. If I do my budget, uh, just by doing my budget, that's it. I'm going to do the budget. That is a milestone. And for that milestone, when I've achieved that milestone, I'm going to go treat myself to a nice dinner. That's it. Okay. That's motivation to get things done. Now we're going to have a second milestone set up. Okay. So the first time that I save $500 a month before I was saving nothing. Now I'm going to cut money out. I'm going to save $500 a month. The first time I do that, and then I set up my bank to be automated. So the automated savings just happen. I'm going to go spend $50 of that on something that I want. I'm just going to go treat myself. I'm going to go get a massage. I'm going to go, you know, have another nice dinner. If you really like dinners, I'm going to use the money on gas so I can drive to the beach and just have a fun night there. Whatever it is you want to do, it doesn't matter. But the point is you're setting yourself up and you have rewards to look forward to. And normally what I tell people is whatever your journey looks like, try to set it up to where about 10% of the journey every single way you have a milestone uh, and then you have a trophy that's associated with it. And once you've set that up, you'll find that you're really motivated. You're not focused on the, I need to get $30,000 for a down payment on my house. You're just focused on, hey, I need to save $2,000 in the next three months. How am I going to do that? And by focusing on those things, 
you will progress through your journey a lot faster and you won't be as worried when you fail because it won't seem like such a big setback. So that's one of the kind of secret hacks that I teach people. It's a way to psychologically trick yourself and to essentially gamify your life. So if you made it all the way through this and you've implemented all these steps, congratulations for being the hero of your own story and progressing this far in your journey. If you're good with the budgeting and everything said, I have a lot of other videos on here uh, that have to do with investing, getting to your first 100K quickly. If you go to my website, uh, which is in the descriptions below, there's a lot of exclusive information there and a couple other resources that may be able to help you along the way if you want to get a little bit more serious about this. Also, be sure to check out my podcast if you just like listening to things or don't have time you know, on your drive to be watching YouTube or anything like that. It's the Stephen Corson Show. Links down in the description as well. And uh, I, you know, I, I do this to help people. So one thing I'd really appreciate is if you just shared it with other people along with your journey. And then that brings them along the journey with you. So hopefully that helps. And until our paths cross again.